The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, grace is first. Then afterwards, the results of grace. Holiness is the fruit of faith. The believers must know his place on risen as a risen with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is. Before he can realize the power of indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to overcome the deeds of flesh. Romans 6, 4. Romans chapter 6 and 7 in comparison to Romans 8. Teaches a sandwich between two, the deeds of the flesh of the old sin nature. If a believer doesn't know, because he must know it, it is day e binding to know what is his place with the risen Christ, so that first, later on, after knowing his place as a risen Christ, he can know what is the power that really goes with him to overcome the flesh. Since we the believers are not known that we are alekene ketesis, we the believers are not known that we have been permanently indwelt by the Trinity. We the believers have not known that we have an invisible power. We the believers have been made not known what is your real position in Christ, exalted, superior than to the chief fallen angel as known as Satan. We are not able to understand what are we in Christ. The 40 absolutes compiled by Lewis Perry Chaffer, furthermore given to us by the revision through Robert Bunker Time. Those 40 absolutes represent your identity in Christ. And this identification in Christ to divide you to know what are you in which dispensation you are is what has been nullified by the so-called Satan. And add a, in order to add more fuel, to work like a double engine. Double engine means not at one end and the both at the far back end. Both aligned together with the stronger strength. If one engine produces some horsepower, double engine, it will double the horsepower to go in the right motivation, to go in that direction where it has been leading. So to this old sin nature, if your evolution is negative towards Bible doctrine, your old sin nature acts as a double engine with the power of Satan to lead you not to know what are you in Christ. That's the simple fact. That's the simple truth. When a believer doesn't know what he is in Christ, how can he come to know and live a life that will be given by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to show forth maximum glorification unto our Lord? And how is it possible for us to note that? And how is it possible for us not to consider that? We cannot come back and look and understand what is the reality that we have in Christ until and unless we have been enlightened by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's why you have been given a rebound in the privacy of your priesthood to understand the truth. That's why you have been given to get back into the fellowship as greater it could be rather than wasting your time in useless and worthless things. That's why you and I have been chosen to the praise of his glory and his grace, so that you can know by the true mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in understanding the truth of the word. And you can be noted very easily by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know where are you, why are you, and what are you in Christ. Because you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. And that seal cannot be broken until the proper authorities and witnesses are present. And all the purpose of such sealing has been answered. And Christians are sealed unto the day of redemption. Unto that day when redemption shall be perfected in glory. This sealing is both retrospective and prospective. The retrospective positional truth. You have been sealed unto the day of redemption. And you have been left over here in this earth. Because your position has been greater than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. 
And you need to execute that position through experiential sanctification in the day-by-day -day process of daily intake of Bible doctrine. A believer has been mandated not to worry, but rather he's been told, Rejoice in the Lord always, because it is Lord who careth for you. And what are we need to do? We need to occupy with Christ. Doesn't we have seen in our life the greatest miracles of all time? Whatever pain you get, whatever sorrow you get, whatever temptation you get, Lord doesn't take it out like that. Lord knows when we are having the capacity, when we are having a faithful walk with Him, He knows how to obey. He knows how to clear us when we obey. Moses, whenever he had a problem, what did he do? He tried his own solution? No, he went unto the Lord. His solution was only one thing, to get down upon the knees and ask, Lord, Lord, direct me. Because he was a man faithful in all the house. The same thing with David as well. He would have tried his own human energy to get over the strength of the kings who have come to invade him. He would have tried his own energy when he went wrong. But he get down upon the knees and asked the Lord, a man after God's own heart. That is what you and I have to be in Christ. We have been sealed unto the day of redemption for only one simple thing, to be perfected in glory. And what are we doing nowadays? When our trials come, temptations come, we go for human viewpoint and human energy. Our Lord said, vengeance belongs to me, I will repay it back. Why are you worried? You're gone with the principle of the reality of the truth, what I've given to you, so that you can grow into the maximum glorification for Christ. The day, the ceiling is both retrospective and prospective. It looks back to Calvary and onward to the heaven. The day when the terms of our spiritual purchase were agreed to, when the divine compact was settled, when the seal was affixed, was the day when the Savior said, It is finished, tell us tie. We come into part enjoyment of this redemption on earth. In heaven, all the terms of the agreement will be fully manifested and enjoyed. You are sealed much unto the day of redemption. Whatever may be the trials and difficulties through which we have to pass, however much we may be tossed on having the ocean of life, let us not abate our courage or lose our heart, for we are reserved unto the day of redemption. Let us not think that we are the children of fate, the mere toys of blind circumstances, the playthings of tyrannical or ironical unreasoning force, for we are reserved unto the day of redemption. God, the loving and all-wise God, has mysterious methods of preservation. He may reserve in poverty, in trial, in sickness, terror, in sore bereavement, in heart anguish, in soul throbbings of fearful measure. When waves and billows toss and groan and sweep with fury, still God reserves, and sometimes thus reserves that the crest on the seal may be all the brighter. Therefore, dear brethren, what is the one decisive sign? by which we may know whether we have the indwelling ministry of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit or not, so that you could be sealed, and you have been sealed unto the day of redemption. It is to be a mere sentiment, an impression upon the mind, a religious hope, or is it to be something more decisive, emphatic, and incontrovertible? Do you ask a question, and we will always have a reply for it. What is the one decisive sign that a man has been controlled by Ladgad, the Holy Spirit? And we approach this question through two others. If we have a poetic spirit, how do you prove it? You do not prove it by prose, but by the poetry. If you have a heroic spirit, how do you prove it? Not by cowardice, not by craven heartedness, but by adventure, by freely encountering peril that is evil in all its thousand forms of possibilities and visitation. At the same time, have you the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? The decisive sign is love of holiness. It is not in the power of theological debate, not only contending for the faith once delivered to the saints, not only outwardly irreproachable character, but love of holiness. The theological debate may be the human knowledge, but what Ladgad the Holy Spirit teaches for us under the mentor ministry of Ladgad the Holy Spirit, so that we can get back to the real transformation, the renovation of our thinking, not being conformed, not being fashioned to this age, but rather being conformed to the image of Christ demands, not just some theological syllabus and theological debates, but purely by the true holiness of your walk in this earth. 
greater the true holiness of walking this earth, greater will be to understand that we are a heart that pants after the holiness of God, a life concentrated into one burning power to be sanctified, which is body, soul, and spirit, the experiential sanctification. Because positionally you have been sanctified, ultimately it is not God the Father by taking care back you in heaven will sanctify you. But this day-by-day -day process of experiential sanctification is one prayer that we need to pray, a heart that pants after the holiness of God, and that should be only of a burning prayer, a life of sacrifice on God's altar. That is what we mean by saying that holiness is the one decisive test of our having been controlled of the Holy Spirit. And dear brethren, we need to note the day is coming when the image of Christ will be stamped so indelibly indelib 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 by the Spirit upon the mind of man that it can never fail. And that day is today. The day is what we go through the daily renovation of thinking. The day is what you and I take as a serious consideration, not to waste our time. A day of renovation in a day-by-day -day process. Ultimate date of our spiritual resurrection, a physical resurrection, the metaschemat is over, is there. But dear brethren, day by day, when the image of Christ will be stamped, as we walk so indelibly by the Spirit upon the mind of us that it can never fade. And this can be done only when we know what is our position in Christ and we know what is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, given to us to overcome this flesh. Ponder over these things. We shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given in this politic of privileges to live forth and show forth your image, imprint upon our mind, and let the whole realize that we have been called for sun mar for my, that is together with a form, a form to the image and the likeness of Christ. And to know the image and the likeness of Christ for the humanity which has been left over, it demands the fifth phrase explanation of which he spoke on the cross, I am thirsty. The same joy, reverence, realization, absorption, we can have provided we are being faithful through Rima and being constantly available that the true power minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling us is a sign of holiness and our heart with a burning prayer should go for the controlling power minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit so that we can show forth thy sanctification of our body, soul, and the spirit. And we have been sanctified as by positionally, experientially, we need to grow in a day-by-day -day process. Help us to do thy will so that either we do in thought, word, or deed a sin. Help us to come out by using rebound and walk and help us, our infirmities to be taken out and be strong enough for thy word to the praise of your glory. To this extent, we pray in Christ's name, Sovereign Father. Amen.